The summer air was warm as Maria Stevens stepped out of his office building. A sadness lingered on his face, though he tried not to show it. The soft light of the setting sun illuminated his path toward his parked car. A gentle breeze stirred the leaves on the trees, and each step in the summer landscape reminded him that it had already been four years since his life changed forever. In the car, Marius took out his phone and dialed the number of his daughter Sylvie's nanny. Good evening, Mr. Stevens, she said. Good evening, Miss Rise. How's my little one? Marius asked, a faint smile on his lips. In response, he heard the joyful laughter and excited shouts of his daughter, as if the magic of his smile could dispel the darkness that surrounded his soul. I'll be home soon, Marius replied and hung up. On the way home, he stopped by a flower shop. Uncharacteristically, he picked out a bouquet of red roses, each one carefully arranged. These flowers symbolize the memory of his wife, Eva, who would always be with him. When he arrived at the cemetery, his heart began to race. The sky was grey, and the wind howled as if saying goodbye. She was gone. Marius slowly walked toward Eva's grave, who had died during childbirth with their second child. He could never shake the constant feeling of guilt. Her name was etched on the cold stone, and next to the inscription, he laid the fresh bouquet. I miss you so much, my love, he said through his tears. Sylvie needs a mother, and I can't stop blaming myself for not being able to prevent any of it. He stood at the grave, seeking comfort but finding only emptiness. After spending some time at the cemetery, Marius headed home. When he opened the door, Sylvie greeted him, running toward him with a joyful cry. Daddy's home. Marius lifted her into his arms and spun her round, just as he used to do with her mother. His eyes filled with tears, tears of both happiness and pain. How are you, my princess? he asked with a smile. The nanny and I built a castle out of blocks, Sylvie replied, taking his hand and leading him to the playroom. In the playroom, where the walls were adorned with colorful drawings, Sylvie proudly showed off her castle. Marius sat down to look at it, and his heart filled with warmth. That evening they spent time together, playing and talking. After dinner, Marius read Sylvie a bedtime story, and she quickly fell asleep. He gently stroked her hair and quietly whispered, Mommy loves you, little one. That night, Marius couldn't fall asleep for a long time. Lying in bed, he reflected on the past. Every moment spent with Eva felt as vivid as if it had been only yesterday. He remembered her laughter, her touch, and how she cared for them both. The morning began as it always did. Marius woke up early, before dawn it had become his routine. He needed time to prepare for the day ahead. While Sylvie slept he enjoyed a cup of hot coffee, sitting at the kitchen table. His thoughts drifted between the previous night and the upcoming work meeting. The coffee was as warm and comforting as the memories of the pleasant evenings he had spent with Eva. He left the house, taking with him a briefcase of documents. As he approached his car, he looked up at the grey sky and recalled how such days in the past never troubled him. Now, every morning was filled with anticipation and unease. When Marius entered the office, he was greeted by his secretary, Evelyn, a woman in a sharp suit with elegantly styled hair, always cheek and professional. Good morning, Mr. Stevens, she smiled. Good morning, Evelyn. Marius replied, glancing at her. How are you today? All is well. Just a reminder, your meeting with the partners is at noon. I've prepared all the documents and sent them to your email, she said, handing him a folder of papers. Thank you. Marius answered shortly, accepting the documents. Entering his office, he began reviewing the materials. The documents were well organized, 
but Marius's attention wasn't solely on the numbers and proposals. He was thinking about how to secure the deal on the best terms for his company. At the scheduled time, he headed to the office of his lawyer, Edgar Cole. The office was downtown, and although Marius had been there many times, he always felt a bit nervous before the meetings. Good afternoon, Mr. Stevens, greeted the lawyer, extending his hand. Good afternoon. Is everything in order, I hope? Marius replied, shaking his hand. Everything is fine. Please, let's discuss your case, Mr. Cole said, gesturing to the chair opposite his desk. I've reviewed your partner's proposals. Let's start with the key points. They sat down at the table, and Mr. Cole began going over the details. Marius listened attentively, following each word. As you can see, Mr. Stevens, the partners are suggesting an increase in percentages. They believe this will strengthen the partnership, Mr. Cole explained, pointing to a chart in the documents. However, I believe your offer is already fair and beneficial. Increasing the percentages would lead to higher risks and costs. I agree. Marius nodded. But I want the deal to be mutually beneficial. We can't afford significant losses in the current conditions. Maybe we should propose a different compromise. For example, we could offer a small bonus or additional long-term benefits to offset the percentage increase. Every step requires careful analysis, Mr. Cole said, leaning over the documents. And most importantly, your proposal needs to be justified as strongly as possible. Marius pondered, considering the possible options. Suddenly the office door opened, and the lawyer's assistant entered with additional documents. Sorry to interrupt, but we have a few more details that need to be discussed, she said, handing the papers to Marius. Thank you, he replied, flipping through the materials. Marius was thinking about the upcoming meeting. He knew he would have to convince the partners of the benefits of his proposal. Every word, every phrase was important, and confidence and precision played a crucial role. I think we should still offer the bonus, Marius said. Yes, that's a good idea, Mr. Cole replied, making notes. Marius nodded, pondering the idea. He knew that every step had to be carefully planned to avoid missing the opportunity for a successful deal. Excellent. If everything goes well, I'll be able to prove to them that our offer is fair and profitable, he said, standing up from the table. Wonderful. I'll prepare all the necessary documents and make the adjustments, Mr. Cole assured him. I'm confident you'll succeed. When Marius left the office, he felt a sense of relief and confidence that he was ready for the upcoming meeting. He had a challenging day ahead, but now he had clarity about how to approach the negotiations. Back at the office, Marius immersed himself in work, preparing for the meeting. He discussed the details of the proposal with his colleagues and finalized his presentation. Time flew by, and the tension began to build. Soon it was lunchtime and Marius headed to the restaurant where the meeting with the partners was scheduled. The restaurant chosen for the occasion was known for its cosy atmosphere and impeccable service. Soft music in the background created a relaxing ambience. Marius noticed that the partners had already arrived and were seated at a table in the corner of the room. Ronnie King, the person with whom Marius would be discussing the terms of the agreement, was sitting at the table and his assistant, Paula, was beside him. As Marius approached the table, Mr. King stood up and extended his hand. Good afternoon, Mr. Stevens. It's a pleasure to see you. I hope we can have a constructive discussion about our proposal. Good afternoon, Mr. King, Marius replied, shaking his hand. Thank you for taking the time. I hope our proposal meets your expectations. They sat down and Marius noticed that Paula, a young woman with dark hair and expressive eyes, was watching him intently. 
It was unsettling, but Marius tried to ignore it. Shortly, the waiter arrived with the menis. Despite the calm surroundings, the conversation quickly returned to the main topic. I've carefully reviewed your proposal, and overall, I like it. Mr. King said, studying the documents Marius had brought. However, I'd like to discuss the possibility of increasing the percentage. That's very important to us. Mr. King, Marius said, trying to remain calm, I understand your request, but I can't agree to such an increase. We need to cover the company's costs and have at least a small profit margin. We've already made a fairly generous offer. Paula, sitting next to Mr. King, continued to watch Marius closely. Her gaze was focused and analytical, as if she was waiting for the conversation to reach a climax. I understand your position, Mr. King replied, but I don't want you to make any hasty decisions. I need some time to think it over. Very well, Marius nodded. You have a week. I'm sure you'll find the best solution. If my offer doesn't suit you, I'll have to present it to other potential partners. Mr. King smiled, but there was a hint of cunning in his smile. I'm sure we'll reach an agreement, he said. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. As they were preparing to leave, Paula stood up, and, as Marius made his way to the exit, she approached him and subtly handed him a business card. Mr. Stevens, if you need any additional consultation or assistance, don't hesitate to call, she said with a warm smile. Thank you, Paula, Marius replied, taking the card. He felt her gaze linger on him a little longer than usual, but he tried not to read too much into it and made his way out. Marius realized that the meeting hadn't gone exactly as he had expected, but perhaps this was only the first stage of the negotiations. When he returned to the office, he couldn't stop thinking about the business card Paula had given him and the sense of uncertainty it had stirred. Though he preferred not to dwell on it, he focused on preparing for the next steps. Late that evening, when the office was already empty, Marius went over the documents again and thought about his proposal. Time was running out, and his thoughts kept drifting back to Paula and her gaze. It had been professional and friendly, but something about her behavior was unsettling. Perhaps it was just her intense interest in the matter. Late at night, Marius finally returned home. It was almost 11 p.m., and after a long, stressful day, he felt exhausted. Entering the house, he headed to the living room. The aroma of the dinner that Tessie, the housekeeper, had prepared still lingered in the air, but Marius didn't want to eat. He just wanted a glass of whiskey. With a nostalgic sigh, he poured himself a full glass and, sitting down at the table, turned on the TV. But the news couldn't distract him from the worry and tension surrounding the negotiations. As he reached for the remote, his hand accidentally brushed against Paula's business card from the meeting. He froze for a moment, staring at her name on the card. With a sigh, he decided to dial her number without thinking too much about it. After the first ring, she picked up. Good evening, Paula. This is Maria Stevens. I'm sorry to bother you at such a late hour, but I wanted to talk with you. A soft laugh came from the other end. Mr. Stevens, good evening. I recognized your voice. How can I help you? I wanted to know how your day went, he asked, trying to keep his tone casual. It was busy, Paula replied. But Mr. King is leaving for a few days, so things will get a bit quieter. How about you? Pretty hectic. Marius admitted. Lots of paperwork and preparing for the next steps. But maybe I'd like to spend tomorrow evening in a more pleasant setting. May I invite you to dinner? That sounds wonderful. Paula responded warmly. I'd love to. When and where? 
Let me think, Marius said, scrolling through a list of restaurants on his phone. How about Balthazar at 8 p.m.? It's known for its cozy atmosphere. That sounds perfect, I'll be there, Paula said with a smile in her voice. Thank you for your time. Good night. When Marius hung up, he felt his heart beating faster. After finishing his whiskey, he headed to the bedroom, thinking about the upcoming evening with Paula. Meanwhile, Paula was equally pleased that Mr. Stevens had finally taken the bait. The morning began with cheerful chaos. Marius was still asleep when his little daughter Sylvie burst into the bedroom. She jumped on the bed, radiating energy and joy. Daddy, it's time to get up, she yelled, hugging him. Rubbing his sleepy eyes, Marius responded. Good morning, princess. He hugged her and kissed the top of her head. Why are you up so early? The nanny promised we'd go on a picnic in the park today. Sylvie said excitedly, still bouncing on the bed. I can't wait. Well, since you're so eager. Marius said, getting up and stretching, feeling his body wake up. After a quick breakfast, Sylvie and her nanny, Miss Rise, headed to the park with a bag of sandwiches and a picnic basket. Marius was glad his daughter would spend the day outdoors. He himself headed to the office to finish some tasks. Despite the usual work atmosphere, Marius's thoughts were far from the paperwork. Sitting at his desk, going through piles of documents, he couldn't stop thinking about the upcoming dinner with Paula, filled with excitement and anticipation. He decided to send her a small gesture of appreciation, a bouquet of flowers, delivered by courier, hoping it would brighten her day. When the flowers arrived at her office, Paula immediately sent Marius a message. The flowers are beautiful. Thank you. Reading her response, Marius felt his mood lift instantly. He smiled and returned to work. Soon, his best friend and head of marketing, Philip, walked into his office. Well, it seems like someone's life is changing, Philip said, grinning at the cheerful expression on Marius's face. Flowers! That's new! How did you know? Marius asked in surprise, standing up from his desk. How did you guess I sent flowers? Dude, I know you. Philip laughed. Who's the mystery lady? Paula, Roni King's assistant. Marius explained, unable to hide his smile. Got it. So someone not from the office, Philip squinted, still smiling. Sneaky. I thought we had new employees I didn't know about. No, no, Marius replied. We just met at a business meeting, and that's all. Doesn't seem like it was just business, Philip remarked, winking. Yeah, we're having dinner tonight, Marius admitted, clearly happy. I hope it goes well. You'll have to fill me in on all the details afterward, Philip said, patting him on the shoulder. Marius kept thinking about the upcoming dinner. As lunchtime approached, he couldn't resist checking his phone. There were messages from colleagues, but the most important one was from Paula, thanking him again for the flowers. The workday felt endlessly long and with every glance at the clock, his impatience grew. No matter how hard he tried to focus, his mind kept drifting back to the dinner. When the workday finally ended, Marius headed home to get ready for the evening. He took a shower, picked out one of his best suits and freshened up. As each minute brought the dinner closer, his excitement grew. Before leaving, he checked the restaurant information and made sure everything was going according to plan. Everything had to be perfect. With that thought, he left home and headed to the restaurant where he'd agreed to meet Paula. When he arrived, he noticed he was a bit early. This gave him time to calm down a little and check his reflection in the mirror by the entrance. He tried not to think too much about how the evening would go, but he couldn't shake the excitement and anticipation. 
When Paula entered the restaurant, all eyes turned to her. She was wearing an elegant black dress that highlighted her refined beauty. Marius stood to greet her, and seeing her smile made his heart race even more. Paula, you look stunning, Marius said, kissing her hand in greeting. Thank you, Marius, she replied, her eyes shining with happiness. I'm glad we could meet. You look very elegant yourself. They sat down and began to look through the menu. Marius ordered a bottle of wine and suggested, How about we start the evening with something light? I think that's a great way to relax and talk. Paula nodded. I love trying new things. During dinner they talked about everything. Paula shared her interests, her love for art and travel. Marius, in turn, talked about his recent trips and shared interesting stories from his life. He especially enjoyed talking about his daughter, Sylvie. Sylvie is my little joy, Marius said when the conversation turned to family. She always finds a way to brighten my day. We often go to the park or have picnics and she loves spending time outdoors. She must be very sweet, Paula said warmly. I've always dreamed of becoming a mother. It must be incredibly rewarding to watch your child grow. Marius, a bit shy but touched by her words, continued. Yes, it's a true blessing, but it hasn't always been easy. Sylvie and I went through a lot of hardships after her mother passed away. I tried to be her support. Paula placed her hand on his. Her touch was soft and comforting. I'm so sorry you had to go through that, she said with sincere sympathy. I can only imagine how hard it must have been for both of you. You care so much about your daughter, it's really touching. Marius felt his heart lighten at her words. Paula's gaze was full of understanding and compassion, which gave him a special sense of comfort. Thank you, he replied, his voice slightly trembling. It means a lot to hear that. I really try to be the best for Sylvie. For just a moment, Marius imagined Paula as a mother figure for Sylvie. He thought that maybe her caring nature could make Sylvie even happier. But it was only their first date, and it was too early to be thinking about such things. As the conversation went on, Paula skillfully steered it, deftly guiding Marius to open up more. She showed interest in every word as if even the smallest details of his life fascinated her. Paula laughed when Marius shared funny stories about his daughter and nodded warmly when he spoke of her dreams. She displayed touching interest, but deep inside she was already formulating a strategy. Her goal was clear. To make Marius fall in love, to make him believe she was the woman who could be a good mother to Sylvie and a reliable partner for him. As the evening progressed, their conversation grew more personal. They spoke of their dreams, fears, and hopes. Paula shared her own feelings about how important it was for her to find time for herself. Sometimes I feel like there's so much going on in life that I lose myself, she admitted. But when I take a moment to rest, I quickly recover. Marius nodded in understanding. I know what you mean. Sometimes I need to stop and enjoy the moment too. Moments like this help me recharge and feel more positive. After dinner, Marius offered to walk Paula home. They left the restaurant, and he noticed how fresh and pleasant the evening air was. The walk to her home gave them another chance to talk. This evening was very special for me, Marius said when they arrived at her house. I really enjoyed spending time with you. Paula looked at him, her eyes shining in the lamplight. I had a lovely time too, she replied warmly. I felt very comfortable with you. As they said goodbye, Marius slowly leaned toward Paula and, unable to resist, gently kissed her. Paula responded to his kiss, and the moment felt endless. It was exactly how she had planned to end the evening. They remained in each other's embrace, and Marius felt his heart race even more. 
Good night, Paula, he said as they finally pulled apart. Good night, Marius, she replied with a smile before disappearing into the darkness. Marius watched her go, feeling his heart swell with emotion. He couldn't believe how quickly this woman had won his affection. With that feeling, he headed home, already looking forward to their next meeting and the continuation of their relationship. The next morning, Marius woke up early despite the emotionally charged night. As usual, Sylvie was the first to wake him. Daddy, wake up. Her voice pulled him from sleep, and opening his eyes, he saw her smiling face. We're going to the park today. Good morning, princess, Marius said, getting up and hugging her. Yes, we're going to the park, but first we need to have breakfast. Sylvie bounced around the room in excitement while Marius prepared breakfast. Time spent with his daughter always brought him joy and peace. Today felt special, and he had a sense that something important awaited him. After breakfast, when they were ready, Marius pulled out Paula's business card from his pocket and decided to send her a quick message to see how her day was going. Hi, Paula, he began. How's your day going? Hope all is well. The reply came within minutes. Hi, Marius. My day's been pretty busy, but everything's good. How about you? Marius quickly responded. We're off to the park. Paula immediately replied. That sounds wonderful. Have a great day. By midday, Marius and Sylvie had arrived at the park. It was a beautiful place, full of greenery and flowers, perfect for a walk. As always, Sylvie quickly found someone to play with, while Marius used the time to think about Paula. Later in the afternoon, Marius and Sylvie returned home. Sylvie was full of excitement from the day spent with her father and quickly fell asleep. Marius felt a pleasant tiredness after the eventful day with his daughter. He took a shower and went to bed, drifting off to sleep. He thought about how he wanted to spend the day with all three of them together. He just needed to find the right moment to introduce Sylvie to Paula. But first he needed to be sure that Paula was the one. A few weeks had passed since Marius and Paula spent their first evening together. Their relationship had developed rapidly, becoming more emotional. Each day brought new experiences and moments, and they found more time to enjoy each other's company. For Marius, it was a moment when he saw Paula as the perfect woman who could become a part of his life. For Paula, however, this was the beginning of a carefully planned game she had devised with Marius' longtime friend and business partner, Filippi. She knew that every smile, every gentle tone in her voice was her weapon to put their plan into action. Of course the plan wasn't hers, it was Filippi's idea. Philippe was well acquainted with Marius. They had started their careers together, sharing successes and disappointments. It was this closeness that allowed him to use his knowledge of Marius to devise a truly ruthless plan. Paula and Philippe met in a cozy restaurant on the outskirts of the city to discuss all the details of their scheme. They sat at a table in a dark corner, hidden from prying eyes, and Philippe laid out a plan for how they could gain control of the company. He knew everything about Marius, including that his greatest love in the world was his daughter Sylvie. Knowing that after Marius's death, the company would go to his wife, Philippe convinced Paula to become his weapon. Your task is to make him fall in love with you, Philippe began, looking intently into Paula's eyes. You need to make him believe you are the one he has been searching for all this time. I understand. Paula replied calmly, nodding. She had long been willing to do anything for wealth and power. We will play on his weakness for his daughter. If I become a caring mother to her, Marius will let his guard down. Paula added. Philippe leaned forward his eyes shining with determination. We will plan everything down to the last detail. You won't just be his mistress, you need to become his wife. The more time he trusts you, 
the easier it will be to strike. After the wedding, we need to make sure to get rid of him quickly, Filippi said. We will arrange everything so that his death seems natural. Then you can calmly take over the company. Paula agreed, her confidence only growing. She had thought through how to show her love and care in public while with Marius and Sylvie, ensuring that no one would suspect she was merely playing a role. Her goal was clear to seize the company, using Marius's love for his daughter as the key to his trust. In that dark room, sitting across from Philippa, Paula felt for the first time truly close to success. They had planned everything, and nothing should interfere with them. Marius had no idea that his loyal friend and new love had united to destroy his life for money and power. Paula played her role perfectly, and Marius had no doubts that this acquaintance could kill him. A month had passed since Paula moved into Marius and Sylvie's home, and it seemed they had found a rhythm in their life together. Paula took care of the house, was attentive to Sylvie, and at first glance did everything to make the family feel happy. Marius seemed to gradually begin to believe that after all the losses and hardships, he had finally found peace. Here was the perfect picture he had dreamed of. Marius had been thinking for a long time about proposing to Paula, so he chose a cosy restaurant with a view of the city. This evening was special to him, and he wanted Paula to remember it forever. Candles burned at their table, creating an atmosphere of coziness. Marius was nervous and tried to control the tremor in his hands as he looked at Paula sitting across from him. She noticed that Marius was anxious and understanding what would come next, she bestowed upon him her most charming smile. Marius took a deep breath, trying to collect his thoughts. Paula, he began, leaning slightly forward. You know, I've thought about this for a long time and I realize I can't imagine my life without you. You are not only my love but also the person I have always searched for to be by my side. Paula nodded listening intently. She tried to appear slightly surprised, even though everything was unfolding exactly as she had planned. You speak in a way that makes me feel like the happiest woman, she said, touching his hand and putting on a gentle smile. Marius was inspired by her words and felt that nothing could stop him now. He reached into his pocket, and a small velvet box gleamed in his palm. Opening it, he looked Paula in the eyes. Paula, you've made me happy, and I want you to be a part of my life forever. Will you marry me? His voice trembled, but was full of sincerity and hope. Paula, as if losing her voice, paused, trying to intensify the moment. Then she pretended her eyes filled with tears. Marius, she whispered, trying to make her voice sound shaky. She put all her acting skills into this moment. I can't believe it. Of course I agree. Marius took her hand, placing the ring on her finger, feeling his heart fill with joy. Paula leaned towards him, hugging him tightly, pressing herself against him so he wouldn't notice the cold glint in her eyes. Inside her, triumph was boiling. She knew that with this proposal she was one step closer to her goal. Everything was progressing perfectly. Her grip on the company would now be even stronger, and Marius had no idea that his feelings had become her most reliable tool in this treacherous scheme. The wedding was lavish, and of course everyone admired the bride and her attitude towards Sylvie, which charmed everyone. Family life turned out to be even more wonderful than Marius had expected complete trust and understanding in everything. Sylvie was happy and he couldn't believe his happiness. But Paula needed to move on to the next stage of the plan. One day Marius stayed late at work while Paula and Sylvie spent the evening together at home. They watched cartoons and ate popcorn. When the girl was getting ready for bed, she accidentally overheard Paula speaking on the phone. Curious, Sylvie stopped at the door and hardly breathed as she listened. Listen, you said you could poison someone quickly. Is coffee definitely a reliable way? Paula asked, nervously lowering her voice. 
Yes, coffee is perfect, replied a voice that Sylvie couldn't recognize. Everything needs to look natural. The main thing is not to raise suspicions. Once he starts to feel bad, it will already be too late. Sylvie struggled to hold back tears. Her small hands trembled. Unable to listen any longer, she ran to her room, grabbed her phone, and called her dad. Dad, Paula wants to poison you, Sylvie said, holding back sobs. I heard her talking about it with someone. Sweetheart, are you sure? Marius's voice was serious, but there were traces of doubt in it. I heard it clearly. She was asking how to do it best, and they decided to put poison in your coffee. Marius fell silent. He knew Sylvie was not prone to fabrications, but thoughts of Paula, whom he loved, made it hard for him to believe. Okay, he replied, trying to sound calm. I'll be home soon. Please stay in your room and don't come out until I get back. In Marius's mind, everything was a mess. Suspicions and doubts plagued him on his way home. He replayed the moments spent with Paula in his head. Her words, glances and smiles could all have been lies. He wanted to be wrong, but seeing how the darkness of doubt clouded his heart, he decided to check everything personally. When he arrived home, Paula greeted him as usual with a warm smile. Dinner was already set on the table, and a cup of coffee was waiting for him. You're just in time, she said encouragingly, smiling. You must be hungry? Marius sat at the table, picked up the cup, but didn't take a sip, carefully watching Tessie. He noticed her eyes lingered on the cup a moment longer, but she quickly looked away. Something inside him tightened, and he made a decision. Pretending to drink the coffee, he suddenly clutched his chest and fell heavily from his chair, acting as if he were unwell. When Sylvie heard the crash from the living room, her heart tightened with fear. She rushed in and saw her father lying on the floor, with Paula standing nearby. Paula's expression was cold, and it seemed she had no intention of helping Marius. Sylvie ran to her father and, with trembling hands, tried to shake him. Daddy, please wake up. Tears streamed down her cheeks. Paula, help him. Why are you just standing there? He's not well. Paula stood there, slightly frowning, as if everything irritated her. He's just tired. Don't worry. He'll be fine. Paula replied indifferently. But he's not moving, Sylvie screamed, unable to contain her panic. Why aren't you calling an ambulance? Why aren't you doing anything? Paula simply sighed and turned away, as if Sylvie had bored her. At that moment, Sylvie grabbed the phone and with shaking fingers dialed for help. Ambulance, please come quickly. My dad is very sick, he fell, and I don't know what to do. Her voice trembled with fear, and she barely managed to keep from breaking down in tears over the line. Please give the address and describe what happened. A calm voice came from the dispatcher. Sylvie quickly provided the address and continued dot dash my stepmother. She doesn't want to do anything. Please hurry. We're on our way. Stay on the line, the dispatcher assured her. As soon as you hear the siren, go outside and show them where to go. Sylvie glanced at Paula, who was now silently standing nearby, watching the scene with an almost detached look. How could you do this? Sylvie shouted, her eyes flashing with anger. Paula said nothing, just turned away indifferently and walked into another room. There was not a trace of sympathy on her face. A few minutes later, the ambulance arrived. Sylvie rushed outside, waving her arms to show them the way. Paramedics with medical bags entered the house. Are you his daughter? One of them asked, soothingly placing a hand on her shoulder. 
Sylvie nodded, tears streaming down her face. Yes, please help him. I'm so scared. We'll take care of him. The paramedic assured her. Are you his wife? he asked, noticing Paula and her cold gaze. Yes, and there's probably nothing serious. Just blood pressure or something like that, dear. Paula replied, brushing it off carelessly. The paramedics examined Marius and began checking his condition. Sylvie sat beside her father and took his hand, unwilling to let go for even a moment. When they arrived at the hospital, Sylvie stayed close to her dad while he was being checked in. Marius, pretending to be weak, called the doctor over and explained the situation, insisting that Paula be kept under observation. The doctor looked at Marius with understanding and agreed. For the next few hours, they organized a room for Marius and alerted the medical staff. While Marius was in the hospital, Paula periodically came to visit him, but her visits felt strange, and her gaze lacked the warmth he was used to whenever she entered the room. He pretended to be weak but carefully monitored her behavior. During one of her visits, Paula scanned the room and, ensuring they were alone, approached his bed. She looked around, then moved closer to the machine supporting his vital signs. Marius watched her, barely opening his eyes, and realized she was clearly up to something. You'll suffer, Paula whispered quietly. Her voice was devoid of any compassion. She began searching in her bag, and Marius noticed that a syringe appeared in her hands. With cold determination, Paula approached him. You'd better leave now. It would make things easier for me. And I wouldn't have to waste time on this charade anymore, she whispered. Marius held his breath, pretending not to hear her. Paula continued speaking to herself. Did you think I loved you? No, I only needed your company. And you, naive, believed every word I said. But that won't happen anymore. These words struck Marius. He realized that all his doubts had been justified. Paula had no real feelings for him. She was only interested in power and money. Listening to her words, anger and pain ignited in his chest. Suddenly, a nurse entered the room to check the monitor readings. Paula quickly hid the syringe and, smiling, tried to appear concerned. How is he? She asked the nurse with feigned anxiety. His condition is stable. The nurse replied, casting us a suspicious glance at Paula. I just want him to stop suffering, Paula said with a pretended sadness. I hope he's not suffering any more. As soon as the nurse left, Paula leaned closer to Marius and whispered quietly, Tonight, it will all end. I'll come back later when there's no one here. Marius forced himself to remain still and not give any sign that he had heard her. Once she was gone, he called the nurse and explained what he had seen and heard. The doctor and medical staff immediately took security measures and Marius pretended that his condition worsened to lower Paula's vigilance. The next day, after he had supposedly been given a terminal diagnosis, Paula was informed that Marius had passed away. She did not hide her joy. Greedy sparks gleamed in her eyes, and she eagerly agreed to attend the board meeting, knowing that the company would now be in her hands. Paula woke up early in the morning, just as dawn illuminated the room, she stretched, her face glowing with a satisfied smile. Today was the day when everything she had worked so hard for was finally going to be hers. Next to her lay Philip, Marius's friend and her accomplice. They both were certain that the company would now fully belong to them. Paula turned to him and smiled. Finally, it's all ours. A new life begins today. Philip nodded as he got out of bed. I've been waiting for this moment since we started planning, he said, smiling. They headed to the office. Paula was in a buoyant mood, overflowing with joy and confidence. 
she felt like a winner. When they entered the office, all the employees nodded at them in greeting. Her heart raced with anticipation. Together with Philip, they entered the hall, full of joy and confidence. But upon seeing the board of directors, her smile faded. In the main seat at the table, where she was supposed to sit, sat Marius alive and unharmed. Paula froze, her face paled and her hands began to tremble. Philip also stopped in his tracks, his face contorted in shock. Everything around seemed to dim, and Paula felt dizzy, nearly losing consciousness. Marius, not taking his gaze off Paula, slowly stood up so she could fully feel her defeat. Well, Paula, he said, looking at her with a cold, piercing stare, didn't expect to see me. Marius, she whispered, barely containing the tremor in her voice. But how? You're alive. As you can see, Marius replied firmly, and I know everything you have plotted. Philip glanced at Paula and then at Marius, unsure of what to say. He realized their deception had been uncovered, but it was already too late. Marius scanned the room, looking at everyone present. I think it's time to tell what really happened here, he said, addressing the board of directors. The board, astonished by what was happening, listened intently. Marius began recounting how Paula and Philip had planned his murder to seize control of his company. Paula was supposed to take care of me, but instead she and my best friend teamed up against me to eliminate me and take everything I built. His words were full of bitterness. They planned to poison me and wanted it to look natural, but they underestimated me. Paula realized her game was over, and losing her composure, tried to justify herself. Marius, please, I didn't want this. It was a mistake. Please forgive me. Her voice trembled, and she nearly screamed. Forgive. Marius looked at her with disdain. You betrayed my trust. You and Philip tried to kill me for money. You both destroyed everything we had. At that moment, two police officers entered the meeting room. One of them addressed Paula and Philip. Paula Horn, Philip Fort, you are under arrest on suspicion of attempted murder of Maria Stevens and conspiracy to seize his company. Philip stepped forward, trying to wriggle out of the situation and find some explanation. Marius, you have to understand, this is all Paula's doing, she was the mastermind, he began, nervously glancing at Paula. I was just following her orders. She convinced me this was the only way. She planned everything, the poisoning and this whole spectacle. Paula turned to Philip in horror. Her eyes blazed with anger. What are you saying? You came up with this whole plan. You said that if I played along, the company would be ours. Marius, looking at both of them with a bitter smile, shook his head. How predictable, he said, not hiding his contempt. Now you're trying to shift the blame onto each other. You both have played this game for too long, and now, when the masks are off, you turn against each other. He looked at the board of directors, pointing at them. This is what they were willing to do for power. Look how easily they betray one another. These people were ready to go to any lengths, even if it meant getting rid of me. Seeing his attempt to shift the blame fail, Philip started justifying himself again, but his words drowned in the silent contempt emanating from Marius and everyone present. Paula screamed, struggling as one of the officers put handcuffs on her. No, this is a mistake. Marius, tell them I'm not guilty. Panic resonated in her voice, but Marius only watched as they took her away. Philip. Paula turned to him, hoping for support but he stood silently as the second officer put handcuffs on him. You deserve this, Paula, Marius said coldly, looking at her one last time. You chose this path, and now you will pay for your actions. The police led them out, and their resistance gradually faded. Marius turned to the board of directors to conclude the meeting. 
Despite the pain gnawing at his soul, he knew he had to preserve his business and protect his family from traitors. Right now, he wanted to return home as quickly as possible to the one who truly mattered his daughter Sylvie. When he opened the door, Sylvie was already waiting for him in the hallway, her face glowing with joy. She rushed to him and hugged him tightly, as if afraid to lose him again. They sat on the couch, and Marius told her that they were about to have a new happy beginning. He saw Sylvie smile, and it was a genuine smile, the smile of a child who knew her life was safe again. Thank you for listening to the story until the end. Please write in the comments what you think about people like Paula and Philip. Subscribe to my channel Gallery of Stories and share this video with your friends and family. Don't miss the next amazing story coming to your screen soon. See you next time.